record. There we go, letting some more people in. Fab, okay. Just get that up so I can see what I'm doing. Right, hello everyone. And welcome to the 2022 Seal Alliance SharePoint session. Uh, it's really exciting. It's an initiative that we started last year, and it's just an opportunity for some, not all, but for some of the Seal Alliance group members to present what they've been up to <clears throat> and to, you know, kind of share their insights and uh, exciting things that have happened over the year, maybe some low lights occasionally. But uh, we're stronger together, so it's really nice. There's a reminder for me, look to record. Hopefully, I'm hoping Sal will stick a thumbs up that my slides are moving on. Lovely, okay, thank you. So the purpose of the Seal Alliance Strategy Group, we've changed our name from the Disturbance Group into a strategy group, is all of these things which you can read. Basically, we get inspired by each other. We share lots of expertise and knowledge and resources so that we save reinventing wheels. We get ideas from each other, we learn from each other, and it's a safe space. When we've got something we're not sure how to deal with, we can help each other and uh, provide confidence that we're doing the right thing because other people are doing it as well. We can get support when it's needed, but the most important thing really is that we have a united voice because we shout louder together. So thanks, Gareth, for that line. It's a great line. And uh, obviously, we've got a collective response and ownership of uh, the problems that we have, which is really great. OK, I've just got one of the presenters joining, so I might hesitate in a minute um, as I because I need to make her a co-host. OK, so um, if you're not aware, we wrote an open letter in 2022 to the government asking them to make seal disturbance illegal. The response, which you'll be able to watch if you want to read this stuff, you'll be able to watch it on the recording. Um, the response came from government and basically had two things that were quite important. And a third thing that had already happened, which was Operation Seabird has launched around all 22 coastal counties in the UK. But they are still hoping to ratify the JNCC's recommendation to make disturbance illegal, as it is with whales and dolphins. And the third thing was to release a, a coastal and marine wildlife code by DEFRA. And as far as we're aware, that's all going through government. We also, I, I had the responsibility for drafting a 10 minute rule bill for Tracy Crouch, the MP, uh, who read out the rule bill. And the purpose of this is just to get some government ratification and some raising a MP awareness. And then the other big thing that we did in 2022 is the Flying Rings campaign started by Friends of Horsey Seal Group. Uh, way back in 2020, I think it was, or maybe before that, Jenny um, has been doing it. And Jenny's been amazing. These were all the flying rings that were collected from one beach in Cornwall in, in two years. But we, we, we created some new posters and we really started to email people and send letters out to people about asking them to take these things off, off their shelves for sale. And I'm delighted to be able to say that uh, we've had quite a lot of success. Uh, Friends of Causey Seal already had quite a lot of companies saying that they would remove them, but we've subsequently had um, Tesco's Pets at Home and Gareth has recently heard that CVS vets are going to take them off their shelves as well. And I believe Kings Lynn, thanks to Friends of Horsey Seals, Kings Lynn um, Council have banned flying rings on their beaches, along with some other stuff, which is really great news. So, you know, some real good successes, but lots of work to do. Um, if you wish to watch our masterclass, which we recorded two months ago, it's on the YouTube channel, at, uh, the SEAL Research Trust YouTube channel, um, which I will send a link out to and I'll put in the chat later on. So we're hoping to get the JNCC stuff ratified and that Marine and Coastal Code uh, hopefully soon. This is what we're planning to deliver with you tonight. So that's my welcome, really. Thank you for joining us. We do really, really appreciate your support because we're nothing without supporters and volunteers. Uh, St Mary's Island Wildlife Conservation Society are going to present first, followed by Yorkshire Seal Group, um, then back down to Dorset, followed by myself for Cornwall, and then the Seal Project in Devon and into Wales with Gareth at the Gower Seal Project. I'm hoping to try and come up with some common threads as we speak. We'll take questions as well, and uh, then I've got some stuff about um, some key outcomes and then I'm hoping to finish off with a little bit of inspiration. So I'm going to stop sharing now because I'm going to hand over to Sal Bennett, who um, will talk to you about what St Mary's Island Wildlife and Conservation Society have been up to in 2022. Over to you, Sal. Thank you. Well, this is this is a scary bit where we uh, check it. Fine. Check it works. Yeah. 
it'll work, Sal. All right. Okay. And just into our sit, lovely Sal. Well done. Okay. Right. Hi everyone. My name's Sal, and I'm from St Mary's Island Wildlife Conservation Society. Um, St Mary's Island Wildlife Conservation Society is an independent organisation we set up in 2014. Uh, we're based in the northeast of England, and we're run completely by volunteers. And our aim really is was and still is to reduce wildlife disturbance on our local coastal nature reserve. Um, we have an enormous variety of species, but one of the things that we have on our nature reserve is a grey seal haulout. Uh, the community initiative uh, proactively improves the conservation um, value, protection and public understanding of the wildlife habitats. Um, of St Mary's Island and its shores. And we do this by raising awareness, seeking solutions and supporting change. Those are generally the three things that we try and apply to everything that we do. Um, and we're also one of the founding member groups of the UK Seal Alliance and joining others from around the UK and further afield than that to champion better all round protection for grey seals. Um, so most of our work throughout this year um, has involved managing the wildlife refuge area, zoned area, it's got various different names, that we as a group successfully pushed for um, on our nature reserve. We, we came to the conclusion quite early on that this is actually the only way that you can really have um, a protected site is to create an area that people are simply asked not to go into. Um, so most of our work has been involved in, in managing that. And as a group with no authority, we are really proud of our achievements. And it shows that through on-site face-to-face engagement and building strong relationships with some of those in a position of, of um, influence and a whole load of tenacity, really, that, that we in the community can do a lot to protect our local wildlife. So protected sites, it all sounds great, doesn't it? But they really do not manage themselves. And it is only possible for us to do our work because of our incredible team of dedicated, um, highly trained, passionate volunteers that we have. We started off with two in 2014. We now just hit our 40 volunteer target and all our volunteers are extremely active on site. Um, and this is needed really because if you if you think especially through the summer months our days will start by seven o'clock in the morning and if they finish after 10 o'clock at night so we need a big team of volunteers to have people on site all the time and our persistence over the years uh, has seen disturbance to our gray seal haul out drop year on year and this year's disturbance caused from the from land disturbance reached an all-time low, um, historic low as well, because we started doing what we do because of the level of, of disturbance. Uh, we still have a big problem with water disturbance caused by kayaks and stand-up paddle boards, um, which we are trying to address and hope that the grey seals on our site one day uh, will be afforded the same level of protection from and in the water as we've managed to establish for them on land. This year, we finally managed to get um, to reintroduce our scopes and got our bird hide um, reopened. Both of these are important to help promote good practice wildlife watching. Uh, our hide is no palace, I can assure you, but it is enjoyed and appreciated by many, many people. Uh, we can again we can again provide optics for visitors, giving them the opportunity to see our wildlife close up without causing a disturbance. And we can, we support visitors to make positive change, um, which is fundamental to our work. We've been um, so this year we've been working closely with our local police marine unit um, and Operation Seabird. Uh, we're hopeful, hopeful that with collaborative work, we can mitigate some of the shocking water sport disturbance to seals on our site. Um, 
to the seals using the marine aspect of this haul out site and also dispel some of the myths around seal and human interaction in water. And because seals occupy both a marine and a terrestrial habitat, we believe that, that, that they should be free from inter interference from recreational activity in all aspects of their habitats, not simply the land-based aspect of their habitat. So disturbance from the air is a growing problem. I think that's the same everywhere. Um, after years of raising awareness of the impact of drones on wildlife, we are at the last stages of seeing our local authority bring in controls, which we hope will restrict drone usage throughout the year from and over our, na our coastal nature reserve. But because we respect that nature cannot and shouldn't, have to wait while the slow cogs of politics turn, we have persuaded our council to allow some temporary signs in the meanwhile. Um, so we continue to collaborate with other conservation organisations. This, this is quite a big aspect of our work. Uh, we've taken part in the regional Ida duck survey, which includes recording disturbance to Idas on our site. The World Wader Quest survey, which is uh, groups from all around the world recording what, what winter waders they get on their site. We've attended wildlife events with lots of other organisations. And obviously we continue our work with the Seal Alliance to raise seal disturbance issues and promote best practice. We've been returning to schools with our outreach work and we're now attending between two and three schools per month to raise awareness about local wildlife and disturbance issues. Um, and we're finally returning to our free show and tell sessions, uh, not on Zoom, in person. And the first of these will be uh, about the seal pups that we get on St Mary's Island on the uh, 27th of November. Obviously, that's only of interest if you're in the area and you can travel. <laughs> Otherwise, unfortunately, sorry. Um, so the low point for our volunteers this year, as with many sites, was seeing the horrendous impact of avian influenza, especially when we were so helpless to do anything. And the real toll is unknown, but on some breeding sites, including the only Rosiette Turn breeding site in the whole of the UK, which is only 16 miles from our site, um, few birds survived this summer, which is really devastating. And last winter, we saw avian uh, avian flu wipe out many of the wintering and wildfowl birds in the region. So unfortunately, we are braced for this devastating impact um, to continue through the winter. It's not over by any stretch. Entangled seals are becoming more and more frequent. It's always heartbreaking to see wildlife struggling and in reality often dying because of discarded fishing equipment. Dealing with a seal in trouble on a haul out is very different to a single seal on a beach and requires a really different approach, which makes any rescue incredibly challenging. Um, and this, but this seal was the lucky one that having volunteers with so much experience on site meant that we were able to catch um, and free this post wean pup before the sun even came up. And we didn't disturb any other seals in the process, which is something that we always try and make sure that we consider. And the, um, each year we are the local organisers for the Marine Conservation Society Great British Beach Clean and the Spring Beach Clean. Um, and the rest of the year, we we um, our beach cleans are spontaneous because there's no planning for litter. As ever, anyone knows on the coast, it just turns up and it has to be dealt with. Uh, like this fridge freezer here, this chest freezer um, that we had to carry all the way along the coast. And I can tell you that uh, trying to move a chest freezer across boulders and shingle and sand is no easy feat. But we were determined and we did it. <laughs> Finally, exhausted, but did it. So what do we have planned for this year? Well, as always, um, our aim is to reduce disturbance and make space for nature. Mm -hmm. And we do this um, by raising awareness. So we will continue to do that. We'll train more volunteers to increase our face-to-face -face engagement 
raising awareness of uh, our local coastal wildlife and our impact as humans upon it. Um, we'll encourage um, we'll encourage visitors that use and users of our coastal of our coastal nature reserve and the coastline to carry out their activities with consideration. So adapt to the wildlife, put the wildlife first. It's probably more important than your recreational activity as far as I'm concerned. Obviously that's a matter of opinion. We'll we will encourage those in a position of authority and responsibility to make meaningful and positive change. Because although we we are all all of the members of the SEAL Alliance put in all this hard work without though that legislation and those in authority getting behind this sort of change, um, we will we will always struggle. And then, of course, we will continue our work with um, with the SEAL Alliance uh, to champion better all round protection for grey seals in the UK and ensure that our collective voices are heard loud and clear. So that's me, really, a short cap, uh, sort of recap of this year. Um, if anyone wants to ask any questions, you know, to me directly, then please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Sal. Um, if you'd like to put your uh, email in the chat, if you wish, um, then people can contact you directly or there will be okay. time at the end for uh, for questions for sure. OK, um, over to uh, Donna and Arnie, who are from Yorkshire Seal Group, and I'm responsible for presenting for them. So here we go. Over to you, Donna and Arnie. Hi, good evening, Thank everybody. You. I'm Arnie. I've been with the Yorkshire Seal Group for uh, just over a year. We've got the first uh, actually, there, can so. I just, I've just had a message saying Zoom quit unexpectedly. So wow. if, if we all disappear, to, oh, I've frozen, haven't I? Come back into the same link and we'll let you in again. So you Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. OK, yes. So I'm sorry about that. I've no idea. It's just suddenly started happening with Zoom. Uh, so anyway, nothing like uh, raising your nerve levels, are there? <laughs> OK, right. Here we go. Can you see can you see my screen? Probably not. Let me share it again. Right. Here we go. There you go. Over back to you, Arnie. Sorry about that. Thank you very much, Sue. Uh, just uh, go over. Right. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name's Arnie. I'm with the Yorkshire Seal Group, and I've been with them just over a year when I moved up from Langlock, Derbyshire. Uh, quickly, the first uh, slide you saw is actually a picture taken by a professional photographer on site, who I actually watched take half an hour to get into a really good position without disturbing seals and take some cracking pictures with a big lens and a big camera. Um, and I actually went out of my way to thank him, which is unusual on our site because normally people don't care and uh, just trample everywhere. Uh, next slide, please. So that's meeting the team. This is a current team. There's about 32 of us at the moment. Um, some of us are other parts of the world. Uh, our founders, Matt and Neve, are on the other side of the world at the moment. So they don't do many shifts on site. Uh, but these guys all come from different backgrounds from um, conservation uh, outfits uh, from the health sector, some police officers or retired police officers amongst them, Royal Navy, uh, Lifeboat Rescue, and uh, many, many more. But it's uh, the share one thing, and that's the passion for protecting our seals. Next uh, slide, please. So we have uh, three sites along the Yorkshire coast, and we cover both North Yorkshire and East Riding. Uh, one core site and two satellites. Uh, I'm not going to name a core site, though most of you will know uh, where it is, because if we do name it, then we get inundated with visitors, and that's one of our main issues. Uh, we do the one site, and that's where most of the work takes place. Uh, next slide, slide, please. So uh, on the main site, we have uh, an almost daily presence and similar to St. Mary's, we engage with the public um, to educate them and advise them and keep them away from the seals, which helps reduce the uh, number and levels of disturbance. We still do get disturbances. 
unfortunately, particularly on busy days during the summer. Uh, you would need eyes in the back of your head for some people, I'm afraid, and they just don't understand, despite all the signage we've got up and despite all the input we do. We also monitor seals, count and record their locations. Um, and the bottom line, probably quite important, we're on site uh, eyes and ears for the BDLMR. A lot of our members are actually volunteers with the BDLMR medics. Um, so we've got that expertise on site. Uh, so anything that needs intervention, we can liaise with BDLMR and get that moving very quickly with expert uh, on site um, input. And next slide, please. So what we do, last year we, uh, 18, nearly 19,000 members of the public uh, we engaged with um, and we put in nearly 2,900 hour volunteer hours on the main site. We don't list, we do list how many hours we do on the others, but for one, our main site is where our, our centre of the work is. We also uh, delivered 20 curriculum led education sessions to 620 young people and they, like you can see there, they're very young. Um, we have started raising awareness locally and having fundraising events. We are all volunteers and we rely on donations. Uh, but by doing the, the two things of raising awareness, while we're fundraising while we can, that's allowing us to buy more equipment for the site. So we're getting more binoculars and uh, things like that to aid people to see the seals without disturbing them. We carry out a twice yearly seal census. Um, which is uh, fun because we've got several sites to cover along the Yorkshire coast, but we do manage it. Stakeholders, uh, our main stakeholders are the North Yorkshire Moors National Park and the National Trust, um, who we work closely with and are very supportive of the work we do. We monitor social media posts. We've got one volunteer doing that uh, almost as his sole role. And um, this is where we uh, politely uh, engage and um, perhaps challenge inappropriate uh, posts, particularly where people have clearly gone too close to get their favourite picture uh, and cause a disturbance. So we do monitor and we do try and engage with people using social media. We are gathering data on site. We count how many people we talk to, uh, where they come from, where they heard from us. Um, but we also count how many seals we've got, how many pups we might have, and where they are on our particular hall outside. Uh, this information changes over a year, as I'm sure it does at most rookeries. Um, it just gives us a heads up where our seals are likely to be on any one particular day. Next slide, slide please. And uh, at this point, I uh, quick exit left and handed to my lovely uh, assistant, Donna, who won't say to self, but she's actually put this presentation together. So well done, Donna, and thank you. So if there's any blame, it's me, it's me isn't it? Uh, uh, hello, uh, yes, I'm, I'm Donna, and I've been with the Yorkshire Shield Group for uh, a couple of years now. So um, following on from what Annie was talking uh, about, we, we have lots of positive um, encounters on site with the general public, and they really do engage with, with us on the, for the most part really well. But we, we do have issues like uh, a lot of sites do. Um, the picture on the bottom left is the access to our main site. And as you can see, it's, it's not very easy to get down to. So that, you know, that can often um, put off volunteers. But we do get an awful lot of visitors that do come from down, from, uh, down there. The sites that we cover as well, they're, they're not marine protected areas and they're not sites of special scientific interest. So, um, you know, we will talk a little bit later on about some of the things we hope to do, but uh, we, we, we get a lot of visitors and we, we can't sort of control them. The, you know, they, they are, so the main site is a public right of way. Um, we do get a lot of disturbance, people getting too close. Um, the, the picture on the bottom right, that was one of my shifts where all, it was really, really quiet. And all of a sudden uh, it was, I was inundated and, you know, unfortunately lost control and there was a massive stampede. So, um, you know, we, we try our best down there, but we can't always control it. So, but yeah, well, it's not very nice, really. Um, because of the, you've seen a couple of the pictures of, of our sites, we've got a lot of cliff top as well. So people that are, are intentionally wanting to are noisy and they scare the seals off as well. As it's a public right of way on our main site, um, there's, a, there's a lot of people come down because they want to walk to 
up the coast, it's a well-known and well-trodden path. And again, that can also impact on the on the rest and the, the welfare of the seals. We have we do have problems with people who are wanting to, to collect fossils as well. Um, you know, noise and, and just wanting to be where the seals are. So again, we, we politely engage and we encourage and we, we put the seals point of view to try and mitigate any any um, problems with them. Although most of our um, disturbances land-based, land we do have some issues with, with boats as well. Um, next slide, please. Just a few of the incidents. Um, I've sort of concentrated on, on the main incidents that we've had um, on the, the, the main sites that we look after. Um, this one, unfortunately, um, created a, a well, fortunately for us, unfortunately for the seals, created an awful lot of um, social media um, highlighting. What happened was a runner came down um, in January, um, past six of our Seal Alliance signs saying how to watch seals well, past three of our volunteers who encouraged them not, you know, encouraged them not to run, not to run down, explained there was pups and seals and, and uh, proceeded to run through the colony causing stampede and um, the death of one of our pups. Um, the picture on, of the BBC, that's uh, one of our co-founders, Matt, going on to BBC television and just explaining from the point of the seal, just, you know, what the issues can be. I mean, you, you know, if you if you Google it, you can you can find the footage. It's horrible to watch. It shows the runner continuing um, despite the, the seals fleeing over, you know, sharp and nasty rocks. He was identified. People told the police who he was um, and um, it, so all the information was passed on to the police to investigate. Um, it was, I suppose, if you can look at a positive, the BBC coverage looked at the point of the seal, but it was also discussed, part of the discussion for the 10 minute uh, rule in the House of Parliament to try and support the Wildlife and Country Act Amendment for the protection of seals. Uh, next slide, please. Again, just a couple more incidents that, that we see, um, but all actual and potential disturbances along the Yorkshire coast now um, from this year, this summer, are reported as well um, to the police if the series, but um, any potential or actual one are now reported to the Yorkshire Marine Nature Partnership as well. Um, I thought it's not all bad. I know we've just told you some bad things there, but education and um, engagement with the public are valuable tools that we use to prevent these types of disturbance. And the next slide shows some of our wins, which we need to celebrate really. So next slide, thank you. So uh, one of our lovely volunteers um, organized the, the, the beach art promotion with Fred Brown. So it, it gave us a little bit of exposure and also the, you know, the Seal Alliance as well, just promoting our, our, the good work. The unfortunate thing is Tad comes in and it goes away, but it was a really nice thing to be involved with. Um, Arnie, I'll pick you up now, Arnie, because you um, made sure that we've got a, the seal watching, watching seal safely site uh, signed on our satellite site and also worked really hard getting the affiliation with the North Yorkshire Most National Park. Um, we do have entangled seals out there, but with the BDMLR, we have uh, managed to free a few this year as well. There was also another one of our visitors organised the Mass Guardians of the Sea Gathering, so it was a privilege to be involved in that as well, promoting the seals. And you can see the lovely um, lantern that someone made of a seal. Uh, and just being a member of the Seal Alliance, fabulous organisation, and been really supportive to this year. And all, all we strive to do is have happy rested seals. So if we can do that on the shift when we're down there and, and we can see our seals socialise, play, and have some rest, then that's, um, you know, that's a win for us, really. Uh, next slide, please. So what's next for us? Um, continue to explore uh, opportunities for partnership working. It's always good to work with people and, you know, put the SEALs point of view forward. Um, expand volunteer numbers. As Annie said, we've got in the low 30s. We do have a lot of people that leave because the, the terrain can be difficult to get down and, and up. Um, so we always need new people. We would love to divert the public right of way or even maybe close some of the path for uh, pupping season. Our, volunteer, um, our members of public say to, to me, especially I can say, 
why isn't it closed? Why isn't it done? So again, that's something that our co-founders worked hard to try and get. But, um, you know, we can also try and, and help with that as well. Again, we'll love to continue to work with the BDMLR to free the known entangled seals. Again, this the, the top left-hand corner is one that we saw late summer. Unfortunately, couldn't get to. So, you know, but we will we will always involve the BDMLR and, and try and get these little sweethearts. And then looking forward to the uh, usual manic cooking season as well. So um, next slide, please. Next and final slide, I think. Um, so, so that's us. Um, and I've just put really, just to finish, uh, disturbance continues to be a problem for our Yorkshire seals. But I think would be so much more if it wasn't for us being out there and all the volunteers that do a fabulous job to engage with uh, members of public and the education and um, fundraising and all the lovely you know, things that, that our team do. Um, our mission is really, it's about <clears throat> advocating responsible, respectful wildlife watching, creating, creating those uh, meaningful marine encounters for the people that visit our sites. And our aim is really protecting Yorkshire's iconic seals through education, empowerment and citizen science. Thank you. Thank you for listening. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much, Donna. I was speaking, but I was on mute. Uh, <laughs> excellent. Well done, you two. Fantastic work. OK, Sarah Hodgson, you didn't have a chance to practice sharing your screen, but I've made you a co-host. So would you like to um, share your screen now? Sarah is from the Dorset Ooh. Wildlife Trust. Oh, do you want no, me to? No, it's fine. I can do. No, I mean, I've got it loaded if you want. No, it's fine. I'll just go ahead. It's fine. Sorry, Sarah, <laughs> I got confused. Apologies. <laughs> That's all right. No problem at all. Hello. Um, can you hear me all right? We can. Awesome. Um, so, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah. Um, I work for Dorset Wildlife Trust and run the Dorset Seal Project. Uh, so we set up the Seal Project back in 2014 um, just to try and learn a bit more about the seals that are spotted along the Dorset coast. And we're doing that by collecting sightings data and doing some photo identification work as well. But alongside this, um, we're very conscious that we need to raise awareness about seals, how special they are, and also promote um, responsible seal watching. So next slide, please. So just to set the scene a bit, um, for those of you who are not familiar with the Dorset coast, uh, we do get sightings of both grey seals and common seals, um, occasionally both at the same time, as in the top left picture here. Um, but it is a bit different to other parts of the coast that you might hear about tonight. Um, so the Dorset coast is, I mean, Dorset itself is quite highly populated and the coastline is all very easily accessible um, to people by land and also by sea as well. So consequently, we don't really see these big um, seal haul outs. We don't get large numbers of seals all hauling out at the same time. Um, and to the best of our knowledge at the moment, we're not aware of any pupping sites. Um, we get sightings of seals throughout the year, um, but they could pop up almost anywhere along the Dorset coast. Um, so it makes it a bit trickier. We can't sort of focus our efforts just in one specific area. Um, we consequently, with fewer seals, we probably have fewer issues with disturbance, and certainly we don't have serious issues so we don't get the big seal stampedes or tombstoning seals that that other parts of the country might get um, so any disturbance typically might just affect one individual animal um, or maybe just a couple but of course it's no less important so um, we want to keep sharing the the messages promoting the watching seals well advice um, and doing what we can to prevent all disturbance so next slide, please. Um, so I've mentioned disturbance. Um, we, we do still have a few instances and we have had a few instances of seal disturbance this year. Um, so this is one example. It's a juvenile gray seal, um, which appears to be molting. And it was just um, trying to get a bit of rest on the beach, but it happened to choose one of the busiest beaches in the region. Um, actually says it on there so it does say it's Bournemouth Beach. 
Um, consequently, lots of people were getting very close to the seal, crowding around it. Um, and BDMLR volunteers were called out to, to monitor the situation and also to keep members of the public back. Uh, so we were liaising also with the Bournemouth Beach staff to provide information um, and um, the watching seals were advice. The next slide. Um, we also get some quite inquisitive juvenile grey seals as well. Um, so this isn't the first time that this has happened. Um, this is a, a young grey seal that has been spotted fairly frequently interacting with vessels. Um, so it's all well and good when we tell people to keep their distance, but sometimes seals don't always get that message. Um, and whilst we're sort of constantly sharing the responsible seal watching information, um, there's still a lot of misinformation out there. Um, and people sort of report these sightings to us um, and they're all fairly excited and say, oh, the seal loves it. Um, but I think that we need to remember that, that we need to sort of be the responsible ones here. Uh, the seals don't necessarily know that it's not great for them. Um, so we don't want to encourage this kind of behavior really. Um, all too often, these kind of instances are shared on social media and they're more likely to be shared more widely on social media, um, which leads to more people trying to seek out that individual seal to have the same kind of experience, um, which could cause seals to become habituated, which will have long lasting detrimental impacts on their health. Um, but sort of we can turn that around so so these sort of negatives these low lights could actually be a catalyst for change it can certainly help us identify what the issues are um, and we know where we need to focus our efforts to try and stop them happening again in the future the next slide please so on to some of the highlights now um this is was a lovely encounter so we've got uh, three grey seals hauled out. Um, they did manage to find um, a nice sort of rock that's a little bit offshore, so they were able to rest there completely undisturbed, um, which is how we want to see our seals. Uh, so this site is one that, that we do check more frequently now because it's only in the last couple of years that we've actually seen seals um, using this haul out. Um, and for us, um, it's quite exciting that the large female in the, on the left hand side there, you can see she's actually pregnant. And all three seals are known to us. We know from our photo ID catalogue that they've all been spotted in Dorset before. So a bit about our photo identification work. We've been growing our photo ID catalogue now for about the last nine years, and it's really helping us to understand uh, more about which areas are important for seals in Dorset and also to learn more about their movements along the sort of wider channel coast by working with um, other organisations like uh, the Seal Research Trust. Uh, next slide. Uh, so another highlight was, was this seal. Um, so the picture on the right hand side, um, I have cropped it. It's um, so we, it was taken from distance, um, but this was sent in to us by a member of the public. Um, and I got quite excited because I thought I recognised it. So I went back to our photo ID catalogue um, and realised that we had recorded this particular individual before, but way back in 2015. Um, and we've not seen it or recorded it in Dorset since. Um, but we do know that this particular individual has been spotted around the South Devon area um, as well. It's been seen there sort of in between. Um, but it's really nice to see these seals again to see them looking healthy and maturing well. Uh, next slide please. Um, and then this, I mean it had a, a sad start to this story, um, so there's a picture there from the local press last year, so this common seal pup um, was picked up by BDMLR, um, so it was discovered in Dorset um, and it was clearly underweight as you can see and there were some well-meaning members of the public that thought that they were trying to help the seal um, by trying to put it back into the water, which of course we know is not the right thing to do. 
Um, if you've got any concerns about a seal, of course, do contact BDMLR. Um, but the seal ended up going to the RSPCA Centre at West Hatch, where it was rehabilitated, um, brought back to health, built up to a, a, a good weight and released back on the Dorset coast earlier this year. Um, it does have a little tag on its flipper there that you can see. Um, we haven't had any confirmed sightings, although um, obviously we're hoping that that's no news is good news. So hopefully that's um, been given a second chance and is living healthily somewhere. Next slide. Um, so during the course of the year, we've been able to do uh, a lot more engagement, certainly a lot more than we have done over the past couple of years, which is great. Um, we had Operation Seabird launched by Dorset Police in the summer. Um, so they held some engagement events at slipways along the coast. Um, and these were multi-agency events. So they were attended by um, representatives from the uh, Marine Management Organization, um, by Southern IFCA, um, the Coast Guard, um, and a few others as well. So these events were designed to raise awareness about marine wildlife along our coast and also how people um, should behave if they encounter things. So we had some volunteers. Um, we, we sort of trained some volunteers up to go down um, and attend these events uh, just to, to promote SEALs and also the Watching SEALs Well guidance. Um, but these were also a great opportunity to just sort of network and build relationships up with other organisations and we can share information, share ideas, um, and also sort of find out how we can help each other. Um, we also had, um, we attended a community event. So this, there was a Planet Purbeck Festival. Um, so that, that was a great way to engage with the local community. Uh, lots of people were really interested, um, telling us that they had seen seals in the area, but didn't really know too much about them. Um, but it is also an opportunity for us to bust some myths as well. So um, quite often we'll find that if a seal is spotted in a particular area um, and it sort of pops up every now and again, people assume that it is the same individual. Um, but we know through our photo identification that this is not necessarily the case. Um, so hopefully we've um, get more sightings sent into us and, and also sort of raise some awareness there. Um, next slide. Um, and we've also been able to do some remote monitoring of a seal haul out. So uh, this one, although it's a, a mixed use haul out, as you can see in that picture, uh, it's used more by common seals. Um, so we set up these trail cameras to allow us to monitor the site remotely. Um, that means that we don't have, we're not causing any disturbance whatsoever. Um, so the, the cameras are set on a time lapse function and take a photo every five minutes during daylight hours. Um, so that sort of helps us learn more about the seals, how many use it, how frequently times a day that they're there. Um, but it also kind of dawned on us that we can actually use that information and those photos to see um, what kind of human activity is going on in the area as well. So we've just actually brought the camera in for the winter um, and our plan is to go through some of the, the photos and, and also identify um, the sort of frequency and sources of human disturbance, which can sort of help form sort of our plans for, for the future, um, see who we need to target, which sort of user groups we need to target and um, really tailor our engagement that way. Um, so that's pretty much it from me. I Lovely. Think. Um, yeah, if anyone's got any questions, please ask. Um, or get in contact. Lovely. Yeah, put them in the chat. It's a great plan. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Sarah. That was great. OK, so down to Cornwall then with the Seal Research Trust. Um, we uh, ha do lots of different things in all sorts of different climates, and it's, it's a complete and utter privilege to be able to help our UK speciality seals. I always have to thank our funders um, because most of our organisation is volunteer. But on the other hand, we do have a few paid rangers, 1.5 full time equivalent who help 
uh, recruit, train, upskill and then support and keep happy because if we don't keep our volunteers happy, then they leave. So we have these are our three rangers currently with Lauren on the left and uh, Polly in the middle, who is covering for Lauren at the moment and Sarah on the right. And we're hugely lucky to have them. We track our beneficiaries like others do. And this year, I can't see it now because the, the participants are in the way, but we've done 19,000 plus beneficiaries so far this year. Like everyone else, we work in partnerships because we're desperate to break out of our bubble and get to a wider audience. So these are the statutory agencies and the international NGOs that we work with. I'm not going to go through them all, but it's enough to say that there are lots of them. And without them, we can't spread the word further and we can't facilitate change, as Sal said. Uh, we also do work. These are the new partnerships that we've created in 2022, and they've been very productive and very helpful. And some of them are national, which is really great. Some of them are more regional. But uh, either way, it's completely invaluable to have these partners. Uh, on to um, the local partners. These are our Cornish partners. And uh, yeah, without whom our message doesn't get very far. So for me, the inspiration is the fact that just like all of you, uh, all of you are unique. You are not just humans. Uh, so are seals. They're not just seals. They are individual and photo ID helps us identify them. All of these volunteers, this is just a few uh, examples. All of these volunteers are the reason I can tell these stories. So these are the movements that Cornwall has now been linked to. We have a new link all the way down south to Bay Ritz. Uh, incredibly, a seal was released by Bay Ritz Aquarium in southern France, and less than 28 days later, it had swum 800 kilometres up to Mausel in Cornwall. So these creatures really are amazing. And the books say that common seals don't swim as far. Well, these two common seals obviously haven't read that rule book. The good news is, like last year, we had this mum, Serena, who had her first common seal pup successfully weaned. We've had lots of common seal pups rescued but not successfully weaned she was a record breaker last year and i'm delighted to say she had her second pup but doesn't it look a little bit gray seely my nostrils are common seely but the face is very gray right i know this slide is ridiculously busy but i want to make a point with it there are 11 seals on here each with a calendar of years and months down the side the numbers represent the number of ids and the colors are these sites where they have been seen blues are north coast and pinks and purples are south coast well if you look at all those calendars and you just glance around them you realize they're all completely different this seal, for example, used to be north coast only and has completely defected to the south coast, except he makes occasional trips up to North Devon. Go figure. This seal we never see between April and October, whereas other seals are missing for other parts of the years. You know, we say see this one mostly between April and so on. They are all completely different. And that is the wonderful thing about photo identification is you begin to realise that every seal is unique. And I'm thinking Sarah Greenslade thinks she might be identifying one. I'm going to tell you about Ghost. Uh, Ghost is right at the bottom of the screen. I hope you can see her, but right at the top of the screen is her pup from 2022. Look at her calendar, completely different to all the ones I've just shared. We only ever see her during the pupping season. And I'm delighted to say that having had a pup on the South Coast in 2021, she's returned to her usual site in 2022, which is her 19th pup in 20 years. And this is her pup in the top right photo, Hope, hoping now that we've got both fur patterns of both sides, we're going to be able to identify that pup for life if it survives. And sadly, in 2022, we um, said goodbye to um, Blackwall, but she taught us about wound progression. You can see the photos in the top right. She had no scar. And then in the second photo, a little one, it started to look a bit nasty in the third one fourth one it was starting to heal up and the fifth one it was completely healed up as it was when she was put to sleep by British Divers Marine Life Rescue who any seals in trouble we always report to them and you can see she died at her summer site um, near Port Tawan. Problem is lots of seals are dying we had more dead seals in Cornwall than ever before part of that could be we have more seals but this particular seal worries us and is one of many who worry us because he died in his prime at the age of six and uh, we worry that this might be PCB related. And I'm delighted to say that we got money to support some PCB analysis from SEALs. So we will soon find out whether it is or isn't an issue. 
Obviously, seals face a range of impacts from climate change all the way through to food and habitat loss, pollution, bycatch, entanglement, disturbance and persecution. Gladly, persecution is on the decrease in the UK. But um, we are working to try and do some of those things by sharing seal stories with decision makers. Uh, so I'm delighted to say that this was our ability, along with British Divers Marine Life Rescue and Thames Seal Watch, to share with lots of seal related statutory agencies, DEFRA, MMO, Natural England, JNCC, Scottish Government, uh, DARA, uh, which is the Irish, Northern Irish um, group, Sea Mammal Research Unit, share our expertise with those statutory agencies. It's a really fantastic opportunity. Like many others, we were able to launch Operation Seabird in April. And gosh, we've come a long way in the first year with Operation Seabird. As Sarah says, building links with other organisations. We're on the with Gareth on the Wales Rural and Wildlife Strategy Board with the Mammal and EPS group. So that's really useful to be able to input. We had a visit from our MP, George Eustace, who used to be the Environment Secretary, to talk him through all the issues of seals. And I'm delighted to say he saw firsthand disturbance and entanglement, which was really important. And he also got to see a seal pup, which was lovely, and a dead seal pup, which brought home a useful message. We input to the Environment and Food and Rural Affairs Committee earlier in the year, which didn't really seem to have seals on its agenda at all. And I'm delighted to say when they met on the 11th of October, the Sea Mammal Research Unit and Orca were there representing seals, which was really great news. We shove seals and give them a voice into all these consultations that happened this year. So that's a really hard job. It's probably the least enjoyable. And then we also share key actions with partners about entanglement. So if you want to hear about our entanglement work, it's on our YouTube channel. I presented my first talk in Asia, which was quite exciting. Um, yeah, live recorded it, half past and live presented it, half past midnight. But uh, you can watch it on our YouTube channel if you wish. And another NGO global one we work with is the Pinniped Entanglement Group. Uh, so I presented for them as well. And we had a visit from them, which was really fantastic in 2022. We also work to publish a paper. So if you have entangled seals and you're interested, this paper is quite shocking. There are two key findings about a chronically entangled seal. One is that she was seriously stunted in terms of her growth. Despite being four and a half to five years old, she had the skull the size of a one year old. So seriously stunted, but also had a lot of metabolic impacts that meant that her chances of survival were severely reduced by the toxins and the inflammation that had been caused by her wound. So that's also available if you wish to see it. And then we partnered with Keep Britain Tidy because we're able, like many of you, we're able to show the impacts of lost fishing gear on seals. So that was really good. The good news about this story is that um, uh, for the first time, net can actually be recycled in the UK. Previously, it had to go to Denmark. Uh, other key actions we share with partners on disturbance. So we've had 225 records of disturbance, disturbing 839 seals seriously into the sea and another 937 have been woken up and disturbed. We have this um, graphic now, which is available to you. I'll give you the links later. We have this graphic if you want to know what the impacts of disturbance are right the way from interrupted rest through panic and onto injury. The National Trust have been fantastic and fenced off two of our key seal sites to keep people back so they can still see seals but are less vi visible on the clifftop uh, and put up some great signs. We're sleeping and being, di being disturbed is bad for us, so please return to the coast path. And then one of our partner marine groups, Three Bays Wildlife, have also fenced off one of their um, uh, key haul out sites. And they've also provided our local volunteer with a hide. Uh, although, although it's not as fancy as most hides, it is just a lying hide, but nevertheless, it's got a mat in it, look, so he can uh, protect his uh, elbows and knees. And then uh, putting signs up during the pupping season with Natural England and the National Trust has been really key. All of these are publicly available. If anyone wants to use them and edit them for their own use, that would be fine. And British Divers Marine Life Rescue partner with us regularly to pup watch. And I'm delighted to say that this pup on this boulder beach started life like this with a bit of an injury that was monitored and ended up like this fat. It was this fat chonk and successfully weaned, which was great. And in the process, we got another seal alliance sign up with the landowners. 
We share stories to raise public awareness as well. So we have online volunteer training. You can volunteer with anyone. You don't have to volunteer with us for SEALs. You can set up your own group if you wish, but it's free on demand and online. I've written two SEAL courses this year with Field Studies Council. Uh, so please, if you're interested, do get in touch. This one has run twice, Discovering UK Seals, and had 100 people. Thanks very much to the Norfolk Seal Group and to Friends of Horsey Seals, because you put shed loads of people on that course. So even people who know a lot about seals can learn. And the next one that I'm writing over Christmas is about seal field skills for conservation. Course sold out the first time. That's mostly thanks to Friends of Horsey Seals. But I've also written a course for Cornwall Marine Network for NEETS, not engaged in education and training students from 14 to 24 about ecology and conservation. And clearly SEALs feature in that. And we also try to influence book writers. There's a, sup, a supping in the UK book about not a supping. Yeah, there's another book, Snorkeling, in the UK book about to be written. And this supping book has some great information because we engage with them at an early stage and they wove in lots of messages about best seal practice. We've got free stickers. If you want stickers, we can provide those. So they've been taken up by Gower and South Devon. We do boat surveys. Um, so we do offshore surveys as well as onshore surveys. We work with local marine groups, Lou Marine Group, see some fantastic sites. And we do, yes, we do record butterflies as well as jellyfish and all the other amazing things we see. We do lots of events. We had our first shop window display in 2022. I can't thank our volunteers enough for going into schools, going into supermarkets and going to local events and festivals. It's great. The school stuff is key, though. Um, actually, I'm doing a talk, Arnie and Donna, for a school in Harrogate online next week, I think. So we do Zoom talks for schools um, and the feedback from those has been really fantastic. And the first couple of podcasts are out as well. So if you want to watch the podcast, just get in touch. Um, there are two of them, uh, all aspects of SEAL stuff. We have newsletters. If you want to sign up, you can sign up to newsletters. But this is possibly the most useful thing for if you have a group of people and you want to learn more about SEALs. These are all the free resources. There's loads of public ones, education ones for schools, photos. If you want to do your own social media posts about SEALs issues, pups or plastics, we've got free resources you can use in there All following our not looking at the camera guidelines. And then we've also got reports, photos and footage about disturbance, entanglement and flying rings. A bit of a plug here. We've got a jumble bee to raise some funds at the minute. So if you want some good value Christmas presents and you want to support seal conservation, have a look at that as well. We've got an online shop with some great things for Christmas and a wild seal, wild seal supporter and adoption scheme. Uh, basically, um, even if you re realise that you've got a present you needed and it's Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, I'm checking my emails on both those days because I'm seal mad and uh, I will happily send out a present and email it out. So you will be able to get the gift, even if you remember at the last minute on Christmas Day, it'll still arrive on time. OK, that's enough from me. Over to you, Sarah Greenslade. So I will stop sharing. I will put myself on mute and you can start sharing your screen. So Sarah is from the SEAL Project, which operates in South Devon. Over to you, Sarah. OK, hi. So, yes, so I'm I'm another Sarah um, and I do the South Devon um, part of the coast, uh, which now incorporates the South Hams and the River Dart because we have discovered there are quite a number of seals that are uh, in that area. We knew there was a few, um, but it seems to be that most of the conversations I have now seem to be Dartmouth based, um, including calls over the last couple of weeks about seals hauling out on steps on the side of the River Dart. Um, and there must be something wrong. No, they've just found somewhere to rest that happens to coincide with the tide. So um, there we go. Anyway, so this is uh, some of our team. We are wide and varied. Most of us are BDLMR. Um, you may well recognize uh, Chris Berry, who is one of our trustees. Um, and uh, Jeanette Saunders is Sea uh, Dream Education. And obviously Lee, who sat behind me, but blurred out. Um, and we have a number of uh, volunteers. Uh, and in fact, one of them, she lives in Portugal at the moment where she's studying and working and she's still trying to organize, <laughs> organize me. Um, but we do have uh, quite a good time at times. Uh, we were trying to go out on a survey uh, on the speedboat below, but actually it turned into a screaming fest because it was incredibly rough and we didn't get to survey anything on your last uh, particular survey weekend. Um, we do have some uh, fantastic moments. And so 
our highlights. I mean, obviously, seal surveying and talking to people and everything else is our big thing, but we have had some amazing moments over the last 12 months, and this has to be our highlight. Um, we got asked to take part in Country File, uh, BBC's Country File, and uh, so that was recorded in September and it was shown on Sunday the 2nd of October. You can still catch up with it on BBC iPlayer. And so I took part, we took part in that as part as the SEAL project and also as the BDMR and, um, and ironically Jeanette, our other trustee, was involved as Sea Dream Education. So it was a big family event. And it was fan it was a fantastic day. We were told it was going to rain. Didn't wear any makeup just in case it uh, <laughs> all ran. Um, but anyway, it was a great day, and we did this. So there was some North Devon um, BD Lamar guys came down, and also one of our other volunteers, who's a medic and a seal project volunteer, were all there. So we had a fantastic day. And somebody ironically said to me, uh, "Well, there was a, I think there was some sort of social media post saying why would anybody need to practice rescuing a whale because that's never going to happen on Breakwater Beach. No, it didn't happen on Breakwater Beach, but literally a matter of ten days later, we did not, maybe not even that. We did have a uh, whale stranding uh, in Torquay, which is the other side of our the bay we're in. So uh, it just goes to prove that this is necessary. This training is vital." And um, so now I've done seals, dolphins, and, uh, and a whale. So these are a few snapshots from the uh, episode we were in. And uh, yeah, if you can catch up with it. Uh, we didn't make a big thing of it because we thought, ah, oh, yeah, they'll just stick us on at the end for 10 seconds. No, we were on at the beginning and we got quite a big chunk of it. So uh, we, were, we were well chuffed with ourselves. And I think it's, it's good to show the local community doing all these amazing things and also what the BDLMR do, um, because I'm incredibly proud to be part of both of them. And through our um, everything we do, we are a charity. Um, I have a full time day job and I actually spend more hours doing seal project stuff outside of my day job. Um, but so to get a phone call last Christmas while I was surveying shortly before Christmas to say, would we like to go to Westminster Abbey? Um, camera in hand, rain pouring down on me. Uh, yes, please. Um, we got uh, picked to go to Westminster Abbey for the Duchess of Cambridge's um, Christmas carol service, which was just amazing. We had about six days to organise going and um, it was shown on the BBC on Christmas Eve. It's the only time my mum has been disappointed that I didn't still have purple hair because uh, she couldn't pick me out very easily otherwise. But we were seen and we did see ourselves on Christmas Eve and that was just fantastic. And then we went to the uh, Natural History Museum and picked and picked fault with all their bone creations because our skeletons are pretty cool. Um, anyway, so, you know, not being loyal to BBC, we also done some stuff on ITV. Uh, Charlie Powell phoned me up one day while I was sat at work saying, is today a good day to come and see the seals? And um, so I said yes, and we met up and he did his ITV weather report from Brixham Marina with the seals in the background. So um, yeah, so that was, that was pretty cool. So we've had some fun times. So we've done quite a lot. Um, generally, I don't take time off work to uh, go on holiday. I take time off work to do seal stuff and I don't see a problem with that. Uh, we do the Devon County show, which I absolutely adore. And we got invited to go to Dartmouth Regatta to which Chris Berry did a firewalk. He thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, we've done talks in yacht clubs, kayak clubs, sailing clubs, schools, Masonic lodges, um, cafes, youth groups, all sorts. Uh, we do the local um, town hall fete, which I'm doing again in a couple of weeks. And um, we've done that a number of times now. I take the skeletons with me. I take whatever we've got to sell and some of the volunteers come and help us. We have a great time because it's amazing how many people in our own hometown don't know we have seals on our doorstep. In fact, I had a conversation with somebody today. There's only one, isn't there? We don't have a uh, haul out site the same way a lot of you guys do. We certainly don't have hundreds of seals. We have seals choosing to haul out in one of the busiest fishing ports in the country on man-made structures. Um, and in fact, ironically, because their man-made structure of the marina protective wave screen is being worked on, they've had to find somewhere else. So they're picking other pontoons around the uh, 
around the harbour uh, at the moment outside the uh, yacht club. So uh, that's that's the causing some fun and games. Anyway, we have also done Operation Seabird events, which obviously have all been launched this year um, in Devon and Cornwall, and we have thoroughly enjoyed them. We've done three, I think, out of the four that were done this year. And a thank you to James, who is on here um, from the MMO. He's been absolutely brilliant at organising all this. Um, some of it's been done with only day's notice, and we have dragged everything we've got into it. Um, we may not have necessarily got the best weather or pick the exactly the right thing, but I think there's an awful lot we can learn and an awful lot we can do. But I know myself, uh, disturbance issue wise, um, I know I can send everything through to James and he knows who to deal, pass it on to. Um, and we all work quite nicely together. And I think it's good to see all these different groups and agencies um, working alongside each other and being seen together. And, and if and if it didn't necessarily work as public engagement all the time, it all it really worked very well as um, us all getting to know each other and, and learning a little bit about what each other does. So we cover quite an area now. Um, it doesn't look huge, but um, it is when you're traveling it down to Kingsbridge um, to do a talk uh, in the dark. Um, obviously, there's no pupping sites or anything random shown on there, but that's just different locations of where I've held talks. Um, over the last 12 months and uh, I thoroughly enjoy them. Uh, everyone is different, everyone is a different crowd and uh, great fun. And this was probably one of my best. I had a primary school teacher, so when I was 10 years old, so only a couple of years ago, um, my primary school teacher, we did a project and I did a project on badgers and to this day that teacher has never forgotten it he's retired now um, and he runs a folk band called the Contra contraband and he spoke to me a little while ago and we arranged a evening where um, they raised some funds for us the raffle and stuff i got to do a bit of a talk um, but the irony isn't lost on him that i am now doing seals um, which are still teeth and claws um, like the badgers so that was amazing. And I can't call him Paul. I still have to call him Mr. Woodhouse, uh, even all these years down the line. But it just goes to prove that, you know, things stick in people's minds. And, uh, and I think it's amazing that my teacher from quite some time ago um, still remembers the little project a 10 year old girl did. So we, like I say, we don't have a massive hall outside, but we generally have a couple of pups that are always born practically within hours of when we we think they are and they don't disappoint and we have to keep an eye on them but this year we had uh five in total which isn't massive but it is for us and uh, one was born on quite a public beach and as a result um we liaised with quite a few people, MMO. So James was involved in helping me um, just keep a little eye on this. But we also spoke to the landowners, landlord uh, uh, agents um, and the local um, community. Everybody kept an eye on this particular seal pup, including the guy who called it in. He actually changed his holiday just to be available on a, on a daily basis and, uh, to monitor this seal. Um, and as far as we're aware, it's all gone well. And I think all five seals have thrived. I don't know anything different. You never do know, uh, not necessarily, um, but we were able to call on different people to take us out on different boats to check up at different times. And, and I think that's part of being part of a good community. Uh, that's made a big difference to us. The more we get to know people, the more we know we, who we can call on and the more we know who we can trust to call on. That's a big thing. Sarah, we're um, running short of time, hun. So if you can speak no up worries. a little bit, it would be appreciated. Yeah, sure. Thanks ever so much, hun. That's okay. So she's a mum we know well. Unfortunately, while we were in Dartmouth, she was picked on quite a bit and uh, because she's slightly habituated. Um, and unfortunately, a few of them are. This particular one was our first pup of the year, and she was identified by Kate Williams as a seal we hadn't seen since 2013, which was amazing to see her back. But where has she been in all that time? Our most prolific mother, she was uh, on social media and everybody knew somehow where she was going to be. And we managed to get that post removed, which just means just by talking to people nicely, we did gain that um, trust in uh, someone. Um, unfortunately, it just means that these seals are already learning to be around humans. This 
pup from this year has already got a hook in its eye, but actually wasn't frightened of being around humans, which isn't a good thing. So there's stuff we have to work on with public engagement, but working with everybody all together is brilliant. I'll leave it on this one, but this is our Easter bunny who was entangled a couple of years ago and he was back and we've seen him this week. Um, so this is a really good thing. So um, yeah, we just love doing what we're doing and, uh, uh, and being part of all this is fantastic. So thank you to everybody who helps us. Lovely, thank you very much, Sarah. Very much appreciated, lots of inspiration there. Gareth Richards, you're up next, if you would like to share your screen. Gareth is from Wales, so it'll be great to hear what uh, Gower Seal Group have been up to. Yeah, can see it now, Gareth. You're on mute. There's always one thing, isn't there? I, I've been on mute and missed it. Sorry. I will encourage you to unmute. Here we go. That might help you. Yeah. Can you can hear me now, Sue? Yeah, can hear you fine. Oh, fantastic. Can I just say, um, first of all, um, how inspired I've been uh, listening to uh, the other people uh, talking this evening. And it, it certainly motivates us uh, down here in Gower to continue what we are doing. Um, but first of all, I would just like to um, thank the um, Gower Society. Is this changing, Sue? Uh, no. Oh. It did a minute ago. It moved. Yeah, I know it did. Yeah. Uh, maybe stop sharing and start sharing again, Gareth. Okay. okay. Right. And probably a useful note for all of us to unmute before we share screens. Maybe that's, I don't know. Lovely. Try now. No. No, it's not. No. Okay, I'll start presenting on mine, Gareth, if you like. You, yeah, do you mind? You can, you no, can I don't mind at all. Okay, let me just stop share. That's okay. Well, okay. Over to you, Sue. There we go, then. Here you go. Can you see that? Not yet. Oh, okay. That's Oh, no. Zoom's quit again. It's going to kick us all out. And... Is that probably why? I don't know. Try now. There we go. Can you see that? No. Nope. Right. Let me, okay. let me try my us. screen again. Apologies. I'm trying to move on. Uh, there we go. It's moving oh, on. Well done. Fantastic. Um, right. I, um, I've just got to say a great thank you to the uh, the Gower Society, because since we started 15 months ago, they've been um, extremely uh, sort of supportive um, uh, for us. But one of the things that um, uh, I can't believe that, you know, 12 months ago, I was actually sort of sat here telling you what we were, what we intended doing during the, uh, 2022. Uh, and that sort of year has, uh, has flown by. And the one thing that we really wanted to do was, because we were a new group, was to uh, dip our toe in the water and to really sort of gauge what uh, the public reaction would be to uh, a, a new group uh, being formed on Gower. And I must be honest here, we were absolutely blown away. The amount of support that we've actually had from the, uh, the public has been absolutely uh, incredible. And it was the, the Gower Society, really, that helped us by awarding us to quite sort of generous sort of grants to buy equipment uh, and allowing us to, to sort of make it happen and, uh, and get out there. Um, but a lot of um, social media plays a very sort of important uh, part in, in what we do. And because of the um, quite uh, stringent um, COVID uh, restrictions that we had in Wales, it took some time before clubs and, and other organisations were confident enough really to sort of meet up again. But when uh, they did, it was absolutely fantastic to have these sort of uh, one-to-ones with sort of uh, people and sort of groups. And uh, during that time, in fact, we've actually done over 31 presentations uh, now, um, and it's been fantastic to sort of uh, get uh, out there and be able to uh, meet up with uh, with people as well. 
But one thing that we're very sort of pleased with doing is reaching out to sort of um, uh, diverse communities. Um, and we find it really sort of uh, important, especially if we can do them uh, in the outdoors like this one here. Um, because many of the many sections within this sort of community uh, tend to be overlooked. Uh, and this particular group here is uh, a group of um, homeless people from Crisis Wales um, who we met up with and uh, we had a bit of a, uh, an outside talk and it was quite inspiring listening to their stories. Uh, we've also made some really um, close connections with two um, stroke groups. Um, so we feel that it's very important to um, not only target the sort of niche customer base, but really put ourselves out there in a very sort of a, a wide uh, expanse, really. And one thing that we are very uh, pleased with is our junior and uh, our mini and junior SEAL ambassador uh, programs. And uh, a couple of weeks back, SEAL asked us uh, to uh, highlight um, our highlights for 2022. Uh, and I had a couple in mind, actually, but um, last Monday changed my choice, actually, because I had the, um, and this word is, is, is used in the wrong context sometimes, I really did have the, the privilege of delivering a, a, a bespoke junior SEAL ambassador input to a specialist school um, and home for young people with autism and severe learning uh, disabilities. And that was last Monday. Um, and these young people really uh, were experiencing severe challenges in their, in their lives. Uh, many were nonverbal. Uh, the ratio of teachers to some of the pupils was two teachers to one pupil. So there was lots of um, uh, challenges there. But this morning, I, I received a, uh, an email from one of the staff that had written out what some of the children had actually uh, said about the input. And if you don't mind, I'll just read, because I've got it in this, in, right in front of me here. I'll just read one part of the email out. And obviously, I've, I've changed the... Uh, the, the, the school boy's name, but it said, um, uh, for John's quote above, the fact that he was able to remain in the hall for the length of time he did was incredible. He absolutely loved it and has been looking up facts about seals ever since. His attention span is not normally anywhere near that long. So that is a huge compliment and way forward for him. I'd nearly choked when I read it. It was absolutely fantastic. And that's what it's all about, really. And if we can be a very small part in enriching someone's uh, life is, is so important. And it just shows how, uh, how sometimes how powerful our, our seals can be in adding something new to someone's uh, life as well. Um, and it was a fantastic time for me to see these, uh, these wonderful young people uh, just uh, leaving with their uh, uh, with their certificates and proudly displaying their their sort of uh, stickers as well. Um, many of us have actually sort of said, and not as Sarah said the last time. You know, we've had some fantastic um, uh, 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 organisational sort of work in uh, with uh, many different sort of organisations for Operation Seabird, like the National Trust. National Coast Watch, uh, certainly South Wales Police as well. And for us, it's actually opened up uh, a whole new uh, network and being able to perhaps access, like we have in the last sort of uh, week or two, like the National Police um, um, Chiefs Council and the National Wildlife Crime Unit with some exciting positive additions to future investigations coming up as well. Um, like Sarah said, you know, many of our um, members are uh, BDMLR uh, members as well, and uh, I suppose this is probably one of the low points of uh, of the year as well. Is that uh, you know we've had quite a few uh, call outs as well, um, and uh, some of them have been sort of quite sort of bad uh, outcomes. Uh, the outcomes could have been uh, a lot uh, a lot better. We've had a lot more. 
uh, seal pups being washed up, like Sue mentioned uh, earlier as well, and I think that's down to uh, some of the uh, the seas being quite um, uh, quite harsh down here as well. Plus, as well, we've got a bit of an issue with uh, a lack of uh, facilities for rehabilitation locally, and uh, you know we've had to make some very very difficult um, decisions uh, with uh, with some of the seal pups as well. But with all sort of uh, bad news, there's always good news. And Wombat is going to be um, one of the uh, good news stories uh, here. Um, this is um, this is Wombat. He was uh, rescued in 2018 in New Paulsief in uh, in Cornwall. I think I got that right there soon. New Paulsief. Paulsief, there you are. Yeah. And uh, he went to RSPCA uh, West Hatch, where he uh, had uh, sort of a rehabilitation. And, um, you know, he, he, he landed up uh, back on Suragawa and, you know, she looks absolutely uh, sort of uh, fantastic there. So this is my opportunity really to say um, across the UK, a big thank you to those people who, who do care for SEALs, whether it's uh, the, the director of hands-on and rehabilitation units, uh, to those even behind the scenes as well. And I know for the likes, I know that Molly Gray is on this particular uh, call as well. So the out of hours uh, for the BDMLR. So it's a big, it's a big thank you uh, to them as well. And uh, just to finish up, uh, Sue, I, you know, I'm very, very proud to be part of the, the SEAL Alliance. And, uh, you know, it's a big family. It's a fantastic uh, network as well, where we can all sort of uh, discuss so many uh, subjects and it's very, very uh, important to me. And the one thing I'd just like to say at the end of the day is that we never on our own. Um, so that we can have that great support and mechanism. And I'd just like to thank everyone, really, for you know your support, really, which has certainly inspired me and inspired us in the Gower Seal Group uh, to have made 2022 a very successful one. And we're really looking forward to 2023. So thank you very much, Sue. Lovely. Back to you. Thank you very much, Gareth. So I'm going to round up. Uh, so here we go. Hopefully this will work and if Zoom won't crash again, that would be good. OK, so to sum up. I think we've lost you, have we? No, I'm here. Oh. <laughs> so, I'm really sorry, everyone. I've no idea what's happening with uh, Zoom tonight, but uh, it's been happening a few times and I, maybe I need to reinstall Zoom. I, I do apologise. Anyway, uh, I'm going to share my screen uh, and just finish off um, because basically the things that people have been talking about are who has been doing stuff. It's been working with partners and working with volunteers and together we've made a really big difference. The what we focused on, well, obviously disturbance from land, sea and air. But, you know, SEALs are really lucky to have people advocating against that issue. Entanglement, lots of us have been working on that as well and also been doing beach cleans. I know many of you do beach cleans um, and a couple of you meant, had time to mention it tonight. And then the how is raising awareness, encouraging good practice and change, but also including statutory agency change, hopefully with disturbance, but also about drones and, um, you know, getting path um, closures potentially. What do we do with SEALs? Well, we count them, we do ID, we do censuses, but we give them a voice and uh, we tell their stories, uh, which, you know, are obviously unique. And also managing the media. We all of us are having to troubleshoot media, particularly social media. Uh, we do have policies about that kind of thing. So if you're interested in that, we can share that with you. But we're just going to talk to you about what we're aiming to do at the SEAL Research just in 2023, because I'm hoping that this might be illuminating for you. Our focus will be on climate change. And in the last year, we've had a bit of a shock. Obviously, climate change and extreme weather events are causing coastal erosion. But we had um, this massive rockfall on one of our three key haul out beaches on the North Cornish coast. And I don't know if you can see from the graph, but that meant that the haul out that's usually occupied by quite a lot of seals was abandoned for three months because of a rockfall that could potentially be linked back to climate change. And then today, I went to my site today. I've had to spruce up since then. But I went to my site this morning. I got absolutely drenched because not did it hammer with rain, it hammered with hail. We had the rockfall. I'm pretty sure there would have been seals underneath that rockfall, but I can't see any. So I'm not I'm not sure. 
but also we've recorded recently hammering rain. So hammering hail and hammering rain. Extreme weather events are known to be linked to climate change. These are causing disturbance. On this particular day, uh, which was within this last month, we had 37 of the 70 seals stampede into the sea because of the hammering rain. And then today, this is what happened today. I was totally shocked by this. It hailed heavily for about five minutes. And in seven minutes before the hailstorm, these are the storms coming through, look, 292 seals on the beach. And after uh, there were, sorry, that's not correct. Apologies. After there were 20. So all but 20 seals stampeded into the sea. So I did the slide really rushed, I'm sorry, but here's an example look of this side of the beach and then this is what's left on this side of the beach. This was the hail that was on the side of the haul out beach. This is potentially another link back to climate change. So with more climate change, this is disturbance, but it's natural disturbance. Is it natural? I don't know. So, you know, we're thinking that a climate change focus next year will help eliminate, will it help illuminate some of these new potential things that are happening as a result of climate change. We're also working on a deep learning computer vision project, which in 10 years time might link to some really good bespoke photo ID for, uh, software. But at the moment, we're looking for volunteers to pick click when they see a seal in a photo that we send them and then draw a bounding box around it. So if you're interested in getting involved in this project, then it's email that seals at email address. Seal Alliance have all agreed we need to get smarter at social media and perhaps be more strategic. So if we tell everyone when the dates of the social media is going out and the time, then people can share it more effectively. I'm going to leave questions till last because I do want to finish at half past and I don't think I'm going to quite get there. But we'll if you if you can stay after half past, then you can ask your questions. Um, top tips and advice. There is a fantastic new paper out that basically says science hasn't done everything it needed to do for conservation. Clearly, science is a critical part of conservation. But the softer stuff that we're all doing is key, too. I'm just I put the stars on to show where to start reading. It seems there is a huge discrepancy between how we as humans think about our fellow creatures in the sea and how we behave to impact or conserve them. Instead, there is a need to create a narrative of connectedness, the consciousness of human beings being an integral part, can't see that bit, an integral part of the planetary system. We need to trigger positive emotions about marine life in ourselves and we need more holistic aspects of conservation to be incorporated into future efforts focusing on the animal's individuality person personhood and the cultural identity of distinct communities effective marine mammal conservation will only be possible on the basis of profound change in our own values it's a fantastic paper and i can share that if you wish but i'm going to leave with some words from chris packham I went to a talk. I wasn't the only one, but I've, I've cut them all out at the top. Uh, I went to a talk by Chris Packham and he came out with some gold dust nuggets. Keep sight of the bigger picture. Make people think. This is what we're trying to do is just make make people think. It's about a transition one step at a time. We're not expecting them to go from worrying about a seal being in trouble to becoming a vegan. It's not that. It's about taking one step at a time. He said how important it was to be inclusive of all communities and all beliefs and cultures. Don't burn your bridges because once you've burnt your bridge, you've got no going back. And listen well to what people are saying to you, because if you listen well, you can you can respond much more effectively in a way that they're much more likely to hear. Kindness is key. You need to be friendly to win hearts and minds. Use imagination and creativity in the messaging that you use, but always be reasonable, rational and open. Chris has changed a bit, bless him. Uh, be reasonable, rational and open. And tolerance is key to everything. Tolerance of other people and other views. This is one planet and this is one last chance. It makes me tingle saying that because I think if we did all of that all of the time, our messages would be better heard. So I think I think it's gold dust and worth sharing. He did it during a talk about food, nature and climate change, which was really interesting. He did it for the JSO. Um, which is an interesting organisation in itself. OK, so that's us finished. We are a little bit over. I do apologise. Um, we are officially finishing, so please feel free to say goodbye to us. 
Um, and I'm going to stop recording, but if you would like to stay on and ask a question, then we would be very interested to hear it. If you want to put any comments in the chat, please do so. And it's been lovely to have you all on. We really appreciate your time this evening. Thanks very much for joining us. Bye bye. <laughs>